The latest super eruption of Yellowstone occurred 640,000 years ago, and it was long before Homo sapiens saw the light of day. But we were around during another, no less devastating natural disaster. This super eruption took place on the island of Sumatra around 74,000 years ago. That's when an erupting supervolcano wreaked havoc on huge territories sending up plumes of debris and ash that spread for thousands of miles and caused temperatures on the planet to plummet. The effects of this super eruption were visible as far away as southern Africa. Experts believe they could have impacted early humans there. By the time the volcano erupted, our ancestors had already been using stone tools and had likely known how to produce yarn. And some specialists even think that the Toba super eruption was so powerful, it could push our ancestors to the brink of extinction. They claim that Toba might be the largest volcanic eruption to occur on Earth within the last two million years. The eruption disgorged so much pyroclastic rock, it would be enough to cover the entire United States to the depth of a one-story house. About a third of that deposit piled up on northern Sumatra, while a lot more ended up beneath the floor of the Indian Ocean. The super eruption left an elliptical crater lake around 60 miles long. The caldera is so large, it's hard to feel that you're indeed in a volcano. Pumice deposits from the eruption remain in the canyon walls and go deep below the ground. There aren't many arguments about the amount of pumice and ash involved in this disaster. At the same time, experts aren't sure how much sulfur ended up in the atmosphere. Even some sulfur layers in the polar ice could be potential candidates. But so far, scientists haven't found any connection between them and Toba. But let's get back to the dramatic impact the super eruption had on early humans. It turns out some not only survived, but even thrived after this natural catastrophe at least judging by the artifacts they made during and after the eruption. The disaster might not have posed a serious threat to those of our ancestors who took refuge along the coast. Genetic evidence hints that modern humans descend from a few thousand people that ventured out of Africa around 60,000 years ago. Why just a few thousand? According to some experts, the rest of our ancestors could have been devastated by the Toba eruption. After all, the supervolcano spewed out a thousand cubic miles of dust and rock in a flash, leaving a scar in the ground that was dozens of miles wide. All that dust and sulfur Toba sent into the atmosphere potentially cooled the surface of our planet, which led to the appearance of glaciers and the lowering of Earth's sea levels. And since Toba might have had an important role in shaping humankind, scientists have been working hard trying to understand precisely how early humans reacted to this disaster. In 2011, several researchers found an enigmatic soil sample in South Africa's Pinnacle Point, an archaeological site overlooking the Indian Ocean. This sample contained some volcanic ash. After examining the layer, they found more than 400,000 artifacts left by early humans. Those ranged from heat-treated stone tools to signs of fire and animal bones. Based on this finding, the team suggested that early humans on the South African coast thrived after the eruption, living in that area for thousands of years and improving their tools. The region might have served as a refuge during and after the Toba eruption. A 2009 study suggested that the eruption could have lowered global temperatures by 14 degrees Fahrenheit it would have made survival tough elsewhere in Africa. If there had been a volcanic winter, it wouldn't have been as cold along the coastline. On the other hand, newer studies claim that Toba spewed out so much sulfur into the atmosphere that the resulting aerosols could have stuck together, which would have limited their cooling effect in the long term. In other words, right after the eruption, temperatures would have plummeted, but only in some regions. And after three years or so, the effects of the eruptions would have calmed down altogether, becoming not dangerous to humans. Well, apparently, more research is needed. Meanwhile, let's figure out if we should watch out for any volcanoes these days. Last year, thousands of small earthquakes shook the ground near Iceland's Svartsengi Geothermal Power Plant. 
Magma rose to the surface there, and now it has opened wide fractures slicing through the small town of Grindavik. The ground there is still swelling, and an eruption might happen with little notice. But of course, that's not all. Over the planet, 45 other volcanoes keep rumbling. For example, Italy's Vesuvius, that infamous thing that finished the city of Pompeii in 79 CE. Over the last 17,000 years, the volcano has experienced eight explosive eruptions, followed by powerful pyroclastic flows. Dense masses of super-hot ash, lava fragments, and gases flowing at high speeds. The volcano's last eruption happened in 1944. Mount Rainier is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the USA. Its high elevation, chemical composition, and proximity to Washington, Seattle, and Tacoma suburbs, and the volcano's ability to produce massive pyroclastic flows make Mount Rainier a threat to consider. The heat from this volcano could potentially melt the ice and snow covering it, leading to rapid downstream flows of debris, mud, and rocks. The Novarupta volcano in Alaska's Katmai National Park and Reserve formed in a 1912 eruption, which was the world's largest in the 20th century. The volcano sent almost 7 cubic miles of ash and debris into the air. It also produced such a powerful ash flow that it created the Valley of 10,000 Smokes. Mount Pinatubo is located in a populated region in the Philippines. It became notorious after a 1991 massive eruption, which was the second largest eruption of the 20th century. More than 700 people lost their lives during that natural disaster. Today, more than 21 million people live within 62 miles of Pinatubo. Mount Agun, a continuously erupting volcano in Indonesia, had its last major eruption in 1963. It was one of the most tragic eruptions in the country's history. It lasted for 11 months, producing ashfall and pyroclastic flows that led to the loss of more than 1,000 lives and serious property damage. People saw ash plumes above the volcano throughout 2018, following the eruption in November 2017. Japan's Mount Fuji hasn't erupted since 1707. That year, a massive earthquake likely set it off. In 2014, experts warned that Fuji could be at risk of another eruption following the nine-magnitude earthquake that shook Japan in 2011. Experts believed the earthquake had raised pressure below Fuji. The eruption in 1707 sent so much ash and debris into the air that all this mass even reached Tokyo. Should Fuji erupt again, it would affect more than 25 million people in the surrounding areas. The eruption of Washington's Mount St. Helen in 1980 was one of the most destructive volcanic events in U.S. history. 57 people, as well as thousands of animals, lost their lives during that natural disaster. The eruption also destroyed around 200 square miles of forest. Experts think that Mount St. Helens' history of massive eruptions means that future catastrophes are bound to happen. The next explosive eruption might send large amounts of ash all over the Pacific Northwest. No wonder the volcano is under close monitoring. One of Indonesia's most active volcanoes, Mount Merapi, has been erupting for centuries. NASA claims that the biggest risk of this volcano is pyroclastic flows which can spread over vast areas and harm loads of people. For the last time, Merapi erupted in January 2024, sending plumes of smoke into the air. These days, more than 24 million people live in the area surrounding this volcano. Our planet's biggest and meanest supervolcanoes are waking up. When they erupt, you'll surely notice it, even if you live thousands of miles away from the epicenter. Scientists are worried we might not have enough time to prepare and deal with the consequences of a super-eruption. There's some volcanic activity close to the Italian city of Naples. And no, it has nothing to do with the famous Mount Vesuvius, but with another volcano. This one is harder to see, as it doesn't have a tall peak like Vesuvius. But don't let this bad guy trick you. It could be way more dangerous than its giant neighbor. It does have a huge crater that's about 8 miles wide. 
This volcano is called Capi Flegre, and it's actually one of the largest volcanoes in Europe, sitting under the town of Azuale. So, Capi Flegre erupted 39,000 years ago with a bang so massive it spread ash across the whole Mediterranean region. It also caused the temperature to drop by over 16 degrees Fahrenheit across Eastern Europe. It was the biggest volcanic eruption in Europe in 200,000 years. Since then, Campi Flegre has had smaller eruptions, and the last one happened in 1538. Now the area is full of small craters, hot springs, and bubbling pools, and they're all proof that this volcano is still very much alive and brewing something. Since the early 2000s, the ground in the giant crater and the town nearby have been slowly rising by about 1 to 1 and a half inches every year. There were at least 150 earthquakes that shook this supervolcano lately. In May 2024, there was a 4.4 magnitude in the area, the biggest in the last 40 years. Residents had to leave their homes and camp outside, fearing there would be more earthquakes. No one knows how Campi Flegre is going to behave in the following months or years. But the authorities are organizing evacuation exercises to prepare the population just in case. The Italian volcano looks like an innocent kitten compared to the real giants like Yellowstone. For a volcano to deserve the title of a super one, it must be able to produce catastrophic scale eruptions and eject huge amounts of magma, ash, and volcanic gases. The Yellowstone giant meets these criteria. Even though it moves from time to time, the Yellowstone supervolcano hasn't erupted for 640,000 years. But when it does wake up, it might erupt with incredible power, about the same amount as 10 huge nuclear power stations can produce. Under the ground, beneath Yellowstone, there's a super-hot area full of molten rock called magma. As more magma moves into a big space called a magma chamber, the ground above starts to swell or rise. When the magma cools down, the ground falls. Between 2004 and 2009, the ground at Yellowstone rose by almost 10 inches, but then it started to slowly go back down in 2010. Scientists aren't sure if it's going to erupt anytime soon. There's also another big volcano called Long Valley in California that has been active since 1980, and it can be a really big threat. Scientists studying this supervolcano found out that before its biggest eruption, 760,000 years ago, the buildup may have taken less than a year. Now, that's bad news, because a supervolcano eruption can have a huge effect on the world, like the eruption of the Toba volcano in Sumatra around 74,000 years ago. It became the biggest volcanic eruption the Earth had seen in 28 million years. It covered parts of Indonesia, India, and the Indian Ocean with a thick layer of volcanic debris, almost like a 6-inch blanket. The amount of rock it spewed out was like stacking nearly 3 million Empire State Buildings. The giant crater it left behind can still be seen from space. All the ash and gases shot up into the air and blocked some of the sunlight. It caused a volcanic winter that lasted about 6 to 10 years. Some scientists think this eruption might have even affected early humans. Around the time Toba erupted, the human population took a sharp dip and there were far fewer people. Some say this is why all modern humans come from a small group of survivors. According to the Toba catastrophe theory, most early humans in Europe and Asia didn't survive the cold and harsh climate after the eruption. But a lucky group lived through all that in Africa. Not all scientists agree with this idea, and some archaeological and climate records show a different story. Another volcano that changed the world in a big way was Mount Tambora in 1815. The next year went down in history as the year without a summer. It was cold and rainy, and there was snow and frost even in the middle of summer, especially in Europe and North America. This happened because the volcano sent out a lot of sulfur dioxide into the sky, which spread all over the world and made the planet colder. When Tambora erupted, it caused huge tsunamis that smashed homes and took the lives of around 10,000 people. Afterward, about 80,000 more people passed away because of the consequences the eruption had caused in the world. The cold weather ruined crops, so food became really expensive. And because horses were the main way people traveled, the cost of oats that they ate went way up too. Some people even think this led to the invention of the bicycle in 1817, as a new way to get around. 
the eruption made the Earth colder for about three years. Now, even though the Tambora eruption was so powerful, Krakatoa, another volcano in Indonesia, stole the show when it erupted in 1883. It was just easier to spread information about it through telegrams and photos. Its final blast was the loudest recorded sound in history, and people could hear it on 10% of the entire Earth's surface. The eruption started a tsunami, with waves about half as tall as the Statue of Liberty. Now, if we only had 12 months to prepare for a supervolcano eruption, it would be really hard to store enough food and get ready. But don't panic just yet. Supervolcano eruptions are very rare, and the last one happened 26,500 years ago in New Zealand. Scientists think that a super eruption happens once every 100,000 years on average. But the sad part here is that the Earth doesn't follow a perfect timeline. There could be clusters of super eruptions with shorter gaps between them and then longer quiet periods. Since there have already been two super eruptions in the last 100,000 years, there's always a chance one could happen again sooner than we expect. Plus, although there are places like Yellowstone and Long Valley where we expect volcanoes to erupt, there are less obvious possible hotspots. In Chile, there's a volcano called Laguna del Maule that has erupted in the past and left behind a huge crater. Over the last 20 years, the ground there has been swelling really fast, rising up to almost one foot a year. Some people are worried that this could be a sign of a big eruption coming. But scientists say there's not enough magma yet to cause a super eruption. In Bolivia, the Juturangu volcano is also acting up. It's part of a group of volcanoes that have caused super eruptions in the past. Since the 1960s, the ground around Juturangu has been lifting. But the last eruption was 250,000 years ago. Even though the magma might be rising, it's not enough to worry about just yet. The chances of a super eruption happening during our lifetime are 1 in 1,400, which is pretty low, so you don't need to worry too much. But just like someone wins the lottery every week with very small chances, a super eruption could happen sometime in the future. And when it does, we'll need to be prepared. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.